Right, today we're going to show you a little video. Uh, I get asked a lot for a diagnosis on the little red lightning bolt that comes up on the dash. Um, normally on the 3 litre CRD, uh, Mercedes engine Jeeps, Chrysler 300C, even the Commander. Um, now, normally you'll go through your handbook to find the identity of the light and it will give you that it's the electric throttle position uh, sensor that's at fault. Uh, we can tell you that it has nothing to do with that whatsoever. Um, we're used to seeing this quite regularly. Um, we, we're just going to run through basically a few little steps of what you can look for, what you can test uh, to try and come to your own decision as to what's wrong with your car. Right, some of the symptoms that you will get will be a loss of power, uh, you might even get cutting out. Um, what you need to check first of all and foremostly, there is a turbo boost actuator that when you cycle the ignition without turning the engine on, you want to cycle it just to it till it brings all your dash lights on and you should be able to, you might need a helper for this, but if we jump out and go to the engine here, what we need to do, if we look at this actuator here that's on the turbo, when we cycle the ignition, we want this little actuator to pop up. So if I just cycle the ignition, And there we can see that the actuator is moving up and down. That rules that out of the diagnosis. That's doing what it should be doing. It's initialising, it's setting its place. The only other thing that can bring that light on is the swirl pot motor, which is situated down in the V here. Uh, what I'm going to do, if we just take two, I'm going to take this pipe off and we can see it. Right, so I've removed this pipe now. Um, usually, you're going to see a lot of oil and remnants on the top of your swirl pot motor. Um, this is normally why it's failed. The turbo seals on the inlet of the turbo and on this little crankcase uh, vent. This, the leak oil basically on top of the swirl pot motor. The ingress of oil uh, then corrupts the, per the circuit board on the top of the swirl pot motor and then you will get intermittent um, loss of power, etc., and that light. But then, after time, it will completely fail, and you will need to replace that swirl pot motor. Um, it's quite an in-depth job. Um, obviously, being right there in the middle of the V, it's going to take a lot of stripping out. Uh, the fuel filter has to come out. Obviously, this alley pipe has to come out. We've got to get all the wiring that goes underneath the turbo out uh, and then obviously we would recommend that you replace the turbo seals uh, reinstate a new swirl pot motor not a second hand one and then form some sort of deflector plate to prevent this from happening in the future or prolong the life of your swirl pot motor Uh, we've replaced the turbo seal with a brand new part, um, official Mercedes part. So we shouldn't have a problem with leaky turbo seals causing the um, swell pot motor any problems at all. So now we go into the cab of the car, um, and our swell pot, our swell pot cord should be stored now. P1270 stored, that's the only code we're interested in. 
Um, so I'm going to clear all these cords down now, which will just take two seconds. We will get some coming back up because it's got parking sensor issues, etc. And then we just cycle the ignition. Right, so we'll just crack her up and make sure that that light's gone off. And we should see all the dash goes clear. We've just got the seatbelt light and the handbrake light still on. We'll give her a rev. Full boost there. So we just need to take her out on a quick test drive. Make sure everything's doing it what it should do with the correct revs. Um, and then we give her a clean up, ready for customer handover. Fantastic.